very ordinary childhood. I had a very pleasant, ordinary childhood. But of course, I would say that. Anyway. <laughs> no, I did. Uh, my brother and I were raised by a single parent, our mom, who was, we were latchkey kids before there were latchkey kids. And we grew up out in the country and we had the usual friends and uh, my brother and I were both readers. And at some point along the way, I decided that uh, I wanted to be a writer. So I started to type up stories on an old typewriter that I had and, uh, and I started to send them to magazines and I pounded a, a, a nail into the wall and I'd get the rejection slips back and I would put them on that nail and around the time that I turned 17 or 18, uh, the nail fell out of the wall because there were so many <laughs> rejection slips on it. So I got a bigger nail. And uh, if there's any, any secret that I know to success, it's uh, <laughs> if you don't succeed, get a bigger nail. So that's what I did, and it worked out. And uh, eventually, I started to sell a bunch of short stories to magazines that don't exist anymore, because uh, you can get all that stuff on the internet now. But there were these magazines called Dude and Gent and Cavalier and Adam and Knight. And they were the sort of magazines, if you turn them sideways, a gatefold fell out of them. But they paid actual money, and uh, I was working first in a uh, a laundry, and then I got a job teaching school for the princely sum of $6,400 a year. My wife and I married young, had kids young, so we were stupid, it happens. And, uh, and those, those checks came in handy. Um, $200 here, $300 there. And uh, of course I was very proud and I wanted my mother to see my published stories, and my wife came up with this beautiful gimmick because there were, she would photocopy them because she worked in the Fogler Library at the University of Maine. And she would put strips of blacking over the ads for the X-rated movies and the, and the uh, dating sites and all the rest of it. And I sent them off to my mother and she was always pleased and she would always say, what magazine was that in? And I'd say, well, actually, it, Mom, it's in one of those men's magazines, but it buys penicillin for the baby's ear infection, and she liked that. So I started to write novels, and uh, I was uh, not successful at first. And I had a wonderful idea for a book when I was teaching school. And it was February vacation. I had one week, and I wrote this novel in one week, because one week was what I had. And uh, I decided that I would call it The Running Man. And uh, I sent it off to uh, a science fiction publisher um, who did paperback originals, and actually got back a note that said, there is no market for dystopian fantasies. And I thought about that a couple of years ago when The Hunger Games and all these other books came up. And I thought, bullshit, there's no market for dystopian <laughs> fantasies. I was ahead of my time with that. So it was eventually published uh, under the name Richard Bachman along with some other books. So it all worked out eventually. And I did sell my first novel, uh, Carrie. And, uh, the advance was $2,500, which came in very handy because we had a very old car, my wife and I, and uh, we were able to trade it for a Ford Pinto and later found out that they explode. <laughs> but it was a new car, so what the heck. And 